when I first joined, uh, I was a like a, a I was a youth activist promoting like youth activism in uh, for the keep for the development of the youths and the people. Um, so that's when I first met my colleagues from uh, Chin Human Rights Organization. They told me that they are about to open an office in Myanmar. At that time, they were based in Chiang Mai. And they this they asked if I was interested. And I was so excited because I knew that Chin Human Rights Organization was doing very important work for the Chin people, but I didn't know in detail. And I wanted to explore more and I wanted to learn more and also to contribute whatever I can. So I joined. But I thought that I would join this organization only for maybe two years maximum, and then I would fly to any other places where I can, uh, like, uh, how should I say, I can do like some further studies or things like that. But I ended up working here for six years because um, after, like, after about working here for one year, I started to realize that there are so much things to do, and our people need a lot of assistance uh, and like they like almost every day I had to handle like human rights violations and uh, human rights violations faced by the farmers, faced by the women, like rape cases, child labor and forced recruitment into the uh, into the army and all those things I was handling and I was I realized that we we have so much work to do and the work that I'm being a part of is really important for my people and <coughs> I, I grew a like bigger passion for doing the same work that I've been doing and to continue working for people and for to promote human rights um, that's how I ended up here working for six years I can still see how long I would go and I can see myself working doing the same work for so many more years yes to be honest some uh, like three after three or four years I was thinking that that, that that was too much for me. There were times that I myself was also traumatized after like having documentation sessions, after interviewing the human rights vic violations victims. Uh, I myself was like, how should I say, traumatized. And um, but and and also sometimes. Uh, there were many times that I didn't have any, like weekend. We don't have weekends. We need, to, based on the human rights situation violations and the news, we have to work on weekends. We have to work until like 12 a.m., 2 a.m. Sometimes, uh, when the we needed to wait until like the villagers are comfortable to speak. It might be like 11 p.m. So there were times when I was feeling like. I was really exhausted, but like after getting like some rest, I mean like one or two days, I was already, I'm always like feel energized again to do the same thing. Um, and especially when we hear like, when I hear like the, the documentation that I did or the advocacy, like the press release that we made, uh, have some like fruits, uh, how should I say, have some impact, some results that have positive impact on the victims, <coughs> the understanding, the awareness of the general public. So these are the times that I can get my um, energy and I become energized again to, 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 to do the same work. Yes. So, um, so from the first time that I joined this organization and the first time we talk about indigenous people's rights and human rights, there are many people who cannot really accept and uh, who cannot really like accommodate the ideas of uh, having indigenous peoples here in this country 
and also like the human rights uh, violations going on. There are many people who like who denied, who refused to talk about these situations. But uh, the hope is that uh, the work that I've been doing for like the past six years have taught me the lessons that it it teach me is. Um, we need to be very patient and as long as we are we make efforts there is always like change that we can bring it might not be like immediate it might not be fast but things are going to towards a brighter future so um yeah i have so many reasons why i can be positive because the work that we are doing, some they have immediate impact, like within one day, within two days. Uh, some, for some, we have to wait for several months, and for some some things that we do, uh, we have to wait for like many years. And I have my senior colleagues who have been working, who have been doing this work for more than twenty years, for twenty four years, twenty five years, and. They are not even disappointed. Um, so we, as long as we don't give up, there is always hope in progress. So this is the, I think these are the reasons and lessons that uh, keep me moving forward. Regarding the, my hopes for the future, um, I envision the future where these indigenous peoples in the country uh, can enjoy their fundamental rights, indigenous people's rights fully, um, and the respect, there is like more respect among different groups of indigenous peoples um, in peaceful and prosperous uh, community that indigenous peoples can create together. This, yeah, these are the hopes that I have. And uh, also, there is the peace process, political dialogue that is going on. So I also put high hopes in that process. And I believe that the dream of like self-determination that we've long been dreaming. Let me tell you about the, the Chin people. So um, the Chin people are indigenous peoples who have lived in uh, the present homeland since time immemorial. So we joined what is now the Union of Myanmar in order to gain independence from the British together with other ethnic counterparts in 1947. So the Chin struggle, I, I won't call it independence, but the Chin struggle for greater autonomy and federalism began almost immediately after we gained independence in 1948. Um, yeah, today, unfortunately, we still find ourselves struggling for the same ideals that our forefathers fought for uh, through various means, uh, even including armed struggle. So uh, when the human rights organization was first founded, it was founded in the Indian Burma border. And at that time, we were not able to talk about human rights. In, in the country, inside the country, but things have improved quite a lot. Um, and now we have opened an office in Yangon now. So it's been like six years. In 2013, we started opening an office, having an office here, and we moved all our operations from outside the country into Myanmar. So we, and many other uh, human rights organizations also uh, moved their offices from Thailand to Myanmar uh, to be more actively engaged in the ongoing political <laughs> reform process. Uh, however, it is quite hard to say that things have improved with the democratization process. Um, of course, we are at the very early stage in different reform processes, for example, land reform, forestry reforms, and all these things are going on with 
many people saying it's still too early to judge. However, when it comes to human rights situation, things are going worse. Um, as we can all see, there are armed conflicts going on in many indigenous peoples' territories with hundreds of thousands of internally displaced people. The pattern might have changed. For example, forced labor, it used to be very like visible, very obvious, and it took place in front of hundreds of people. And now it, it's taking place, but more secretly and in a more invisible way. Um, but human rights violations in different forms are still going on. Um, forced disappearances, torture, extrajudicial killings, and criminalizing human rights defenders, among others. Um, freedom of religion or belief is still being highly violated. Freedom of expression is almost zero. And even on this very same day, we can see this happen in different places in the country. And these are happening with complete impunity. Just to add, like, uh, criminalizing human rights defenders, for example, uh, our friends who led, like, street performance just to show the situation of in internally displaced people in Kachin state. Uh, they are jailed um, for, like, 15 days for leading that. Um, and, like, um, last year, two, uh, three of my friends, they were also jailed for speaking, speaking up for the internally displaced people who are captured between uh, the, the fightings. So, um, I mean, freedom of expression and, and also now we are seeing many examples of um, journalists being arrested. So the freedom of press is also uh, going quite low. Um, so yeah, sadly, yeah.